So we've seen three different models with three different energy requirements. How can we tell which, if any, of these things is true? Well, clearly we need more data. This is the endless refrain of the astronomer. The governments that we come to for money for new telescopes are utterly fed up with us saying, we've got a mystery, we need a bigger telescope, give us more money. So, more data. We knew very little about these gamma ray bursts. We can't study them from the ground, so we need a new satellite. Right, and that satellite turned out to be one of the NASA major missions called the Compton Gamma Ray Observatory. And it had a particular instrument that was going to be very good for studying these gamma ray bursts, known as BATSI. Uh, BATSI is a long acronym, which we won't go into. And BATSI was interesting because it was much bigger than any other detectors we had flown in space. These were giant scintillators, and there were eight of them. Yes, on the corners of the satellite here pointing in each direction. Right, so they had amazing sensitivity, so much so that they could detect uh, a gamma ray burst a day, rather than a couple a year, a day. That's because they could pick up the faint ones, ones that emitted fewer gamma rays, which the previous satellites had been unable to see. Right, so after this uh, new observatory started taking data, it came up with three new clues to the origin of gamma ray bursts. And so the first clue was this image of where they occurred on the sky. And what you can see is this is the color shows you the energy and this marks the location. And what you can see is no pattern. No pattern at all. I if mean, that is as random as random can be. I mean, you might expect they were coming, say, from our galaxy, in which case our galaxy would be a band along the middle here with a bulge in the middle. And some of them are going from that location, but there are every bit as many coming from clean out of our galaxy. You might expect them maybe to come from the sun or from Jupiter. No, they're coming from everywhere. They seem to come from everywhere. So that's an interesting clue. It's a very weird clue. Yeah. And the next clue is this one. Now, this one shows how long the gamma ray burst lasts in seconds. And this is a logarithmic scale. So there's some of these things that last for about a hundredth of a second and some that last up here almost 100 seconds. And then here, what we measure is essentially how many gamma rays there are that are uh, what we would say hard, more energetic compared to the less energetic gamma rays. So it sort of tells you the temperature or the, uh, the type of emission process, the, you know, the energy level of the emission process. Yes, I mean, gamma rays are just like light. They, they come in many different flavors. We lump them all together and just call them gamma rays. But you, these are a gamma ray with an energy of 300 kilo electron volts as opposed to 25 is a very different kettle of fish. So these ones have more hard, really energetic killer gamma rays, if you like, and these ones are the wimpy ones. So right. even a wimpy gamma ray so is pretty if powerful. this was optical light, the up here is blue, out down here is red. So you can immediately see something here. There are not one thing going on. There appear to be two things going on. There's a big patch here, but there's also a patch here. So that seems to indicate to me, well, does it mean you just, I mean, you can imagine it could mean many things, but the obvious thing is that there are actually two types of, uh, of objects producing these flashes of gamma rays. Not one mystery, but two. So you could imagine, the analogy here is, imagine I went out and I took the human population and I measured their height and their weight. And I plotted it like this. You could imagine that you get potentially two clouds because the human population is made up of men and women. Now, it turns out, if you do that, it's a bit of a blur because men and women aren't that different. Um, they're certainly not as different as these gamma ray bursts appear to be. Whatever there are, there are two of them. So, clue three. Now, clue three is a bit more subtle. And here is a plot from one of the papers, uh, the original paper. And this plot shows, uh, effectively, uh, how bright the object was compared to the, the, the faintest thing it could see, and then the number of those bursts that were seen at that brightness level. So these are the number of bright gamma ray bursts, and there aren't very many of the really energetic ones with huge right. numbers of gamma rays. But as you get fainter and fainter, you see more and more of them. So why don't we have a look at how the shape of this curve can tell us how these things are distributed in the universe.